We're excited to welcome our next presenter to the stage. Please give it up for Principal Tim Brown from Rush Creek Elementary in Maple Grove. morning. I'm going to start off with um, sharing my working definition of identity work. Um, for our purposes here, it simply means um, anything that you say or do that helps a kid figure out who they are. Nothing terribly technical about that. I'm going to share my story and where identity work happened and where it didn't. I'll share that and how it led to my being here this morning. Um, to start, I have to go way back to the beginning, my parents. Uh, so my mother was a member of the White Earth Band of Ojibwe, and my father was Norwegian, making me Ojibwegian. <laughs> uniquely Midwestern hybrid. Um, but if you can see now the, the Venn diagram of who I was as a kid to try and figure that out, the overlapping Ojibwe, Norwegian, and I tried to make sense of that in school, and it was pretty tricky. In fact, um, here we go. Um, day one of kindergarten, my entire career uh, in education began with a bit of an identity mystery. The story goes, I hopped off the bus. My moms are waiting for me on the porch. And uh, she's all eager. She goes, well, how was it? How was the first day of school, Tim? And I guess I stand there, and I said, well, it was good. It was OK. Teacher said there's 19 kids in class. And she said, uh, one of them's an Indian. And so tomorrow I'm going to go back and find out who he is. <laughs> Need a rim shot there, kind of a. <laughs> because the punchline, of course, is that I was the Indian kid to which my teacher was referring. And I didn't know it. I was five, you know, so I didn't quite know everything. But my, my family loved to tell that story because it's kind of funny and uh, poignant. But as I got through the grades, it uh, got a little less funny. Um, because now that I did figure out I was the Indian kid in the class, I was like, what does that mean? How, how you know, isolated am I? Are there Indians in the building? No. Are there Indians in the grown-ups or the teachers that work with me? No. Um, Indians in the stuff I'm reading, the curriculum, Beowulf, social studies? Not really. So a message that I internalized pretty early on um, in my education was that to make sense of this Venn diagram of mine, I gotta put this Ojibwe circle off to the side because there's no real space for it here in school. School is about this white circle, the Norwegian side. That's the curriculum, that's the story. That's your classmates, that's your teachers. So that's the message I got, and that's how I got through school. That's how I marched on each grade with that message, but each year I got a little trickier because that, that void, that Ojibwe circle was just kind of more of a mystery. So I barely made it by 12th grade. I just drug myself across the line. I was, of those 19 kids that graduated or started in kindergarten, I was 16th of the 19 of the D minus kid. And I only graduated because my mom, um, I was the baby, the youngest of five, only the second one to get a diploma. And she was gonna make darn sure that one of us got to at least step foot on a college campus and try it. So that was me. She kicked my ass to make sure I got there. <laughs> so thank goodness she did. Because once I got to the U of M, guess what? place was crawling with Indians. It was, it was awesome. It's like, good God, this is great. I found the Indian kid. They're all over here. But I had to kind of do the long way around. I got the identity work. I got to finally bring in that Ojibwe piece. I did a four-year degree of Indian studies, took two years of Ojibwe language. The identity work now was really kicking in big time. I figured out who the hell I was. Learning was making sense. I kept on going, got my master's. Hell, I got my doctorate degree. Um, but it was a tough journey. But once I got off the launching pad into higher ed, I know who I was, things took off. Anyway, I want to back up now to third grade. Something happened. Um, third grade was when I was really starving to find anything native that I could connect with. I was really looking for that. I managed to find the one book, the one artifact in my building, I think, in our library that was about an Indian. It was a little red and white paperback book called The Jim Thorpe Story. And man, I was like, this guy, football star, Olympic star, native. This guy's like a superhero. Why didn't I hear about this guy? 
I checked that book out religiously. In fact, end of the year, I had to turn that book back into uh, Mrs. Godfrey, the librarian. She starts laughing. She calls me over. She goes, Tim, did you know this? I said, what? She showed me the little cards you just had to write your names on, you know, in the checkout books. She showed me every line front and back. It said, Timothy A. Brown. I, I needed that book, obviously, right? That was my identity work I was trying to muster out of that place in third grade. That was the book, my touchstone. So that was it. Uh, fourth grade, something happened to kind of shift my Venn diagram a little bit with my identity work, and um, I was drawing. I used to love to draw. Drawing came easy to me. Um, I used to draw during math, which worked against me a lot. <laughs> and I was drawing, and I hated to make mistakes. I was erasing, getting mad. I was a perfectionist. And I was getting all upset and flustered. And my teacher, on this day, instead of telling me to put it away and go back to math, she just saw me struggling. She kind of took pity on me, I think. And she went over and she, uh, she leaned down, she put her hand on my back, and she goes, Tim, it's okay, it's okay. Artists don't make mistakes, they just change their mind. It's all right, it's good. And those words at that time was like medicine. It was just really a healing word uh, artist that stuck with me. I rode the bus home that night looking out the window, looking at the fields, I was like, well, I'll be damned, I'm an artist. It, it stuck, I ran with it. And in fact, it probably helped me get through the K-12 uh, experience with my art. Um, art is still a powerful presence in my life. My identity work now is uh, trying to figure out if I'm an artist trying to be a principal or a principal trying to be an artist. But I still do art today, and what comes out of me, oftentimes I don't quite know what I'm going to start with when I go for it, but things like this. This is a piece I did a couple years ago. I call this Captain Native America. See, when I drew as a kid, I was always thinking, wouldn't it be awesome to have like a native superhero? You know, it'd be kick ass as a native superhero. <laughs> I never saw one, so now I make my own. So it's weird, at some level, there's still this need to fill that void. There's identity work, I'm still at some cathartic level, I'm churning this stuff out. It's weird. Uh, I want to make the images I was so hungry to see as a kid. So that's, um, that's up there. And I'm thankful that the teacher said the word artist because, again, it stuck and it helped me get through my, uh, my K-12 experience. So what about my story do I want you guys to take from this, uh, from the 10 minutes here? I guess a couple things. One is simply, when you go back to your buildings um, next week, remember that regardless of your demographics or profile of your building, you've got kids trying to figure out their Venn diagrams. Um, it might not be uh, Ojibwe and Norwegian, but they got different circles they're trying to figure out how it overlaps and where it makes sense. And my whole thing is that um, when a person of any age, a kid or an adult, when a kid or person can stand firm and define themselves and know what they're about and know who they are, they're not worried about being defined by anyone nor are they caught up in trying to define anyone else. It's a beautiful, powerful place to be. Um, and I want my kids in my building to get as close to that spot as they can in fifth grade before they go on to middle school um, for a couple reasons. I don't want them to take the long way around like I had to do. I don't want them to get to college before they do the identity work. I want them to lean into the whole thing in elementary and do what they can to figure out who they are. Because as they go into middle school, and then into high school, you all know the story, the, the cement kind of starts to harden a little bit, right? The, the options seem to kind of narrow and you gotta become who you are. Elementary is the magical wide open place of potential that I wanna capitalize on. So I make time and try and prioritize that and make it front and center with my teachers more and more. When I started as a principal, I thought my goal was to move the needle on test scores. That's the focus. If I do that, mission accomplished. If some kid makes some connection with their identity in the back, that's icing on the cake. Well, that was when I started as a principal. Now, it's flipped around, more front and center identity work because, like me in college, if you can figure out who you are, you can start to take off quicker. That's just how it works. So that's my message to you. Um, I want you, again, go into your building next week, think about the kids you got in your room, in your classes. They're all working on their little Venn diagrams. Do what you can to help that one Indian kid figure out who the heck he is. Um, and I want to thank you for your 10 minutes. Thank you.